Hey kids, my name is Eleanor and for the next few weeks of church we're going to be answering some big questions about life. Questions like, who made me? And who even am I? How should I grow up and what choices should I make as I do it? These are big and important questions that lots and lots of people have lots and lots of different answers for. See, our school teachers, our friends, the books we read or the TV shows we watch probably all have different answers for these questions. And as we grow up, it can get kind of confusing to figure out, well, which answer is the right one? Which one is the true answer? But if we are followers of Jesus, we know that the true answer is God's answer. And so we want to make sure that we know and trust God's answers for these big questions. And so for the next few weeks, as we answer these big questions, we're going to be seeing from the Bible this true thing. And I'm going to teach you some actions to help you remember it as well. Are you ready? So God made you and loves you. He rescued you too. Like we're rescuing someone out of the ocean. And living for Jesus is the best thing for you. Can we try that again? God made you and loves you. He rescued you too. And so living for Jesus is the best thing for you. And so that's what we're going to be seeing over the next few weeks at church. But today we're going to be answering the big question of who made me? Well, who made you as well? And so we get to answer that question, we need to go back to the very beginning. See, in the beginning, there was nothing, well, nothing except for God. And when God said, let there be light, there it was. God said, let there be sky, and boom, there it was. God said, let there be ocean and land, and there it was, just as God said. God then began to fill his amazing world with some amazing things. He filled the day sky with the sun and he filled the night sky with the moon and the stars. But as amazing as the sun and moon and stars are, they weren't made special, not special like us. God filled up the sky with all different kinds of beautiful birds. But as incredible as all the different birds in the sky are, they weren't made special not special like us. God filled up the sea with all different kinds of fish and creatures, but as wonderful as all the fish and sea creatures are, they're not special, not special like us. God filled the land with plants and trees of all different kinds, but as incredible as the plants and trees are, they're not special, not special like us. See, God also filled up the land with all different kinds of animals of all different kinds. But as remarkable as animals are, they're not special, not special like us. See, God looked at everything that he had made and he saw that it was good, but he wasn't done his making yet. No, God had saved the very best for last. How about we read straight from the Bible about what God made next? We're going to read from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image and likeness. Let them rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the tame animals, over all the earth, over all the small crawling animals on the earth. So God created human beings in his image. In the image of God, he created them. He created them male and female. See, kids, God made the sun, the moon and the stars, but they were not made to be special. God made the fish and the birds and the sea creatures, but they were not made to be like God. God made the plants and the animals, but they were not made in God's image. Only people were made special to be like God in God's image. Kids, God has made us to be boys and girls in his image so that we can know him and love him. But what does it mean to be made in God's image? Well, being made in God's image doesn't mean that we look like God on the outside because we all look different, don't we? 
We're boys and girls. We're tall and short. We're dark skinned and light skinned. We're old and young. Some of us have brown eyes. Some of us have blue eyes. And some of us have very big heads. And so if God looked like all of us on the outside, he'd look pretty confusing, wouldn't he? But no, being made in God's image doesn't mean that we look like God on the outside, but it does mean that we've been made to be like God in other different ways. See, God can speak just like we can. Like God, we can create and invent awesome things. We can take care of the world around us and make sure it keeps running. But the most important way that we are like God is that we can love. We can love God and we can love each other. See, because we're made in God's image, boys and girls can enjoy being friends with each other, living in our families together and loving one another as well. But most importantly, because we are made in God's image, we can know and love God. See, animals and birds and sea creatures, they can't do that. No, God has made us special, boys and girls in his image, to know him and to love him. Now, we know that pretty soon after God made people in his image, sin came along and messed it all up. Sin made it impossible to love God and to love each other like God made us to do. But when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he fixed the problem of sin. And so now we can live just like God made us to live, as boys and girls made in God's image, knowing and loving God. Kids, growing up as followers of God is hard work. And so we want you to remember that God made you and loves you. He rescued you too. And so living for him is the best thing for you. So how about we pray and thank God that he made us in his image so that we can know him and love him. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much that you have made us to be boys and girls in your image so that we can know you and love you. Thank you most of all for Jesus for fixing the big problem of sin that stopped us from doing this. Please help us to trust you every day as we grow up. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you later.